One of my favorite games as a kid was Mercenaries Playground of Destruction. It was incredible cathartic fun, running around getting cash to level North Korea's armies and level entire city blocks of airstrikes. So imagine my hype for 2008's Mercenaries 2 World in Flames on new hardware and packing even more mayhem. As one of Pandemic's last games, they took it in a very different direction. Instead of a serious war-torn environment and a melancholy score, we have goofy slapstick humor and mountains of broken mechanics and bugs. Initially a massive disappointment, ensuing games like Just Cause and Metal Gear Solid 5 would ironically become better successes to the original, easing the sting, though I now see Mercs 2 as a textbook good-bad game, as it does pack quite a lot of charm. The story and writing in general is frankly horrendous. In the opening, you play as one of three mercenaries tasked to rescue the Venezuelan general Carmona for a power-hungry billionaire Solano. After that, you're quickly betrayed, shot in the ass, and establish a vendetta against Solano, who then seizes control of Venezuela. With the whole country between you and Payback, with the support of your field advisor Fiona, you establish connections and deals with the numerous factions in the country, from rebels to oil companies, pirates, and later on the superpowers of China and the US, to locate and take down Solano and his crew. The story is very dumb, and the writing is considerably worse than the original game. Instead of a multilingual script, everyone speaks English in either a terrible Spanish, Chinese, or Australian accent. The game's progression is also very linear. You have to support each faction before the story continues, aside from the Americans and the Chinese. The largest choice is who you play as. Mateus is a fucking brainlet, and Mew is a grumpy cow, leaving Jacob as the only reasonable, albeit cynical character, with his endlessly twirling cigar. Besides the small gameplay buffs they give you, like holding more ammo and running or regenerating health faster, you'll have to hear the same one or two lines of dialogue endlessly for the next 8-10 to 10 hours. Add that on top of NPCs and Fiona repeating the same insults or quibs every few seconds, and you want to blow your brains out. So at least choose the least retarded character. There is a bit of fun satire in how hypocritical the different factions are, each vying for Venezuela's oil with little regard for the people all the while making up excuses like democracy, revolution, or economic stability. Mercenaries 2 doesn't capture the devastation of war like the original's North Korea, not meaning to foment controversy, but it's little wonder why it was banned in Venezuela, and pretty telling how the country went from prosperity to near anarchy depicted in the game, all within 10 years. The generally comedic nature of many characters and inclusion of a fair bit of humour seems to hint at Pandemic setting up a sequel, continuing these vagabonds' adventures so its cancellation might have been a blessing in disguise. While its narrative and atmosphere are a step back, the gameplay redeems it with lots of fast-paced, third-person shooting, vehicular combat, and arcade destruction. The main mission work usually involves destroying some buildings and protecting a VIP from harm or capturing one. Things escalate late game as factions start fighting each other to secure Venezuela's oil supply, with whole city blocks becoming war zones, with tanks, helicopters, and platoons of soldiers being common fare. There's also side missions of factions like taking over outposts that enable fast travel, time races, and escort details. While the outpost missions are simple, small-scale fighting, many vehicle-related tasks are a pain. The driving physics are broken and are highly vulnerable. Nothing is more obnoxious than getting blown up and repeating the same boring 5-minute checkpoint race a third fucking time. Controlling a Merc is basic third-person running gun combat. There's no cover system, so the pace of action is fast. There's a large selection of firearms, from Cold War remnants, US homeland favourites, and modern bullpup rifles, though they all sound like airsoft products and are inaccurate as hell. There's an even more impressive range of vehicles, cars, tanks, boats, and helicopters, which dramatically range in size, speed, armaments, and destructive capacity. Larger vehicles and helis require a quick time event to hijack them. This is easy on console, but annoying on PC as you're only prompted by symbols, not keys, so prepare to fail them a lot. However, the pattern never changes, and you can repeat them as many times before eventually succeeding. The controls for them are simple and the modelling is basic, but the different weapon systems have satisfying feedback and destructive capabilities. While seemingly vanilla stuff, the physics are incredibly broken. You can drive up almost vertical hills, bikes careen out of control with a gentle turn, and cars bounce off each other. You can fall out of helicopters, even when exploding, for minimal damage. Vehicles are extremely effective at completing missions and wrecking your shit, so thankfully it's quite easy to acquire them, to traverse and destroy the environment freely. Mercenary 2's map is packed to the brim of small side tasks around every corner, like destroying buildings, picking up spare parts, and capturing high value targets. 
HVTs are often camped down in a base and require you to frag everyone before either calling an extraction to pick them up or executing them. It's an easy and fun way to make quick cash, however it's very risky. Attacking a faction's units has them call in and reduces your standing amongst them as well as being a wanted level system as reinforcements flood in. It's a pain to pay off a faction especially since the early game requires you to remain neutral, so taking out whistleblowers before they raise the alarm is a must. That is, if they don't spawn inside some debris or miles away, making the paltry 10 seconds feel very unfair. Before this all occurs, the game has a slow start where you must secure a base of operations at a villa and employ a helicopter pilot to drop off gear, a mechanic to store vehicles, and a jet pilot to deploy ordnance. Picking these guys up early on is highly recommended. You're only limited by three important categories when playing Mercs 2, that being money, fuel, and your stockpile of equipment. Every action in Mercs 2 has a price. Working with factions opens up their inventory, allowing you to purchase airstrikes, guns, helicopters, cars, and tanks, with cash awarded, either through killing enemies or completing missions side tasks. Calling in support or items is as simple as selecting them in your PDA and dropping a beacon or a laser designator. However, this consumes fuel which is gathered from large storage units, often highly protected and hostile to any thieves regardless of standing. You can increase your max reserves, but you're always limited by your fuel cap. This is both a smart balancing mechanic as it prevents you from spamming airstrikes or tanks at a whim, but also a fair representation of how logistics work. It doesn't matter how much money or APCs and gunships you board, as you're going nowhere without gas, leading to some interesting battles where you procure resources, not money. Besides fuel, you can also pick up airstrikes and stacks of cash littered throughout the world by calling your pilot to pick them up. Alternatively, you can destroy oil tanks and airstrikes, adding to destruction. It's a fun, on-the-fly tactical option. A useful exploit is tagging as many items in an area, calling in a pickup, and then quickly driving away, thus collecting them all in one swoop without alerting anyone. When these different mechanics come together, Mercenaries 2's gameplay is fantastic. Calling in tanks and airstrikes and enemy bases and army columns is immensely fun and chaotic. A stream of rockets leveling the entire neighborhood is cathartic, and the explosions still look and sound good. The general fast, laissez-faire pace, from boots on the ground to air attacks above, and witnessing a fortress or a shipping container explode and collapse around you is incredible gameplay that I adore. Alas, this is not what Mercs 2 is known for, as broken, buggy, and totally unbalanced game design almost ruins the entire game. Goofy physics and stiff animations are fun, having enemies spam rockets and tank shells at you whilst caught in said animations isn't. The AI is atrocious, doing little more than charging at you, and teammates are more of a hazard, making allied firefights worthless. Not that it really matters, as the game can be very easy. Either throw down a beacon, or hijack a tank, and victory is almost assured. Hoarding up loads of cash is elementary when killing factional NPCs nets you thousands of dollars. So long as you're careful, you can easily exploit the system, racking up millions of dollars within a few minutes. From then on, just buy loads of cluster munitions, fuel air bombs, and gunships, and the game is now a cakewalk. Although a lot of objectives and side content are broken, like how allies will destroy buildings they're meant to defend, or how VIPs will walk into harm's way, killing themselves. Because enemies have zero awareness, they spew artillery and explosives onto you and themselves without a care, forcing you to cheat the enemies out in weird ways. The disguise system is carried on from the first game, but it serves zero purpose when you can still kill everyone if you're fast enough. It could have been palatable if it weren't for how ugly the game mode is, especially on PC. Hazy, blurry textures that clip in and out with minimal effects, and just terrible scenery is positively shocking considering how great the first game looked, which had different weather effects, terrain variation, and lighting. Sandboxes live and die in how the digital worlds pull you in, often hiding the blemishes, be it Fallout, Far Cry, Just Cause, or Assassin's Creed. Mercenaries 2 severely lacks this polish, and it's difficult to play or enjoy for any lengthy stretch without getting fatigued. It's one of my best bad games for a reason though. There's lots of great set pieces and destructive battles that'll wow you, but just equally as many moments that'll annoy you or rip away your immersion. For these reasons, it's hard to recommend Mercenaries 2 despite the enjoyment I had with it. Guilty pleasures aren't for everyone, and considering that Pandemic's gone, as is the hope of the third game, and all profits now just go to EA, I can understand people having reservations. However, if you can accept these conditions for a payout of wanton mayhem and carnage, then this is a deal you may want to sign on to.